David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. While I like fountain pens, what I like better are fountain pens with a story or an inspiration behind the pen. And it's one of those types of pens that I have for you today. Uh, I am going to show you a fairly new pen from Graf von Faber-Castell, and that is the Bentley Barnado. Uh, what I'm going to do today is share with you the inspiration behind this pen, go over the parts and features of the Barnado, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go up to the good folks at Faber-Castell for providing this pen for review. The pen arrives in this unique box uh, in racing green. On the front, there are the logos for both Graf von Faber-Castell and Bentley. The sides flip open, and inside we have the pen. Uh, a couple of years ago, Graf von Faber-Castell and the car manufacturer Bentley joined forces to design, develop, and manufacture a series of writing instruments. I previously reviewed the first release from this partnership, which was simply called the Bentley. This model is called the Barnado, uh, and is inspired by a race between a car and a train. A race which I will talk more about here in just a minute. The pen is made from metal and in uh, dark racing green. Uh, the cap is chrome-plated metal, which has been glazed with a green finish, and the barrel has a matte finish, and the trim is chrome-plated. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the end of the cap. There's a lot going on here that I really like. The finial is black with the iconic Bentley B logo. Uh, you can tell this logo is actually hand-painted on, which is a nice personalized touch. Below that is a knurled band, which I feel looks really nice and is meant to represent the gear shift of a modern Bentley. A while back when I reviewed the original Bentley model, I went to a local Bentley dealership to check out one of their cars. Uh, this is a 2017 Continental GT. And here is a picture of that gear shift, which bears a good resemblance to the top of the cap. But to fit in with the overall color scheme of this pen, that knurling is green. Uh, next up, we have the clip. Uh, it is hinged, uh, and I like the unique curves and slope. Um, it's functional to use on both thicker and thinner material. Now, on the side of the cap, it is stamped with the signature of the inspiration behind the name of this pen, Wolf Barnado. Uh, Barnado was a well-known race car driver, having won the endurance race at Le Mans three times, uh, as well as being the chairman of Bentley. And this was the famous Blue Train Bentley. Now, the name Blue Train refers to an actual train. It was an overnight express train that ran from the south of France to the northern part of the country. Uh, in the 1930s, it became popular for car companies to race their cars against trains and then use the victory as a marketing tool. Uh, there were three companies who actually had cars that beat the blue train and went on to advertise the strength of this feat. But the most famous of these cars was a Bentley driven by Barnado. Uh, to add to the challenge, Barnado actually wagered that not only could he beat the train to the north of France, but he could make it all the way to London before the train reached its final destination in the north of France, which involved him having to take a ferry to complete the journey. As the story is told, he easily made it to London before the train arrived at its final destination. Now, there's a bit of legend mixed in with fact in the retelling of Barnado's achievement, uh, and even some controversy about the car he actually used. Uh, you see, this blue train Bentley was actually produced after the race supposedly happened, but I won't go and get into too much of uh, that part of the story. Okay, let's get back to this pen. Uh, there is a medium-sized step down to the barrel. Um, I really like the treatment on this barrel. It's covered in a guilloche diamond pattern and has a nice matte finish. In reference back to Bentley automobiles, the diamond design pays homage to the iconic wire grille of a Bentley. Uh, you can see here that the patterns of both are similar. At the end of the barrel, there is a chrome-plated metal piece, and at the very end, it is concave. I do find myself rubbing the end here, almost like kind of like a worry stone. The cap easily snaps off, and underneath we have a number four sized rhodium plated stainless steel nib, stamped with the Graf von Faber-Castell logo. I've always thought that their nib design looked really classy. Uh, this nib is available in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. 
And here's a look at the plastic feed. Now, I will say this. When I received this pen and I saw the price point, I assumed this had a gold nib, and there was nothing in the writing experience to make me think otherwise. It wasn't until I was preparing this review that I really noticed that it wasn't gold. Uh, this steel nib is very good. Um, it doesn't have some of the flexibility of a gold nib, but it is very soft and very smooth. And I would venture to say that while a gold nib would be nice on this pen, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. Uh, this steel nib is that good. Uh, Faber-Castell knows what they're doing in regard to their steel nibs. Uh, in regard to the section, it is very small and slick chrome-plated metal. Um, I was really afraid when I first saw this section. Uh, it has a similar look as the uh, Faber-Castell Ambition. Uh, the major difference here is that on the Ambition, there's much more of a significant step up to this, from the section to the barrel, uh, which really doesn't work for me personally. Uh, but this section is a bit better in my opinion. While the transition isn't seamless, the barrel material is only slightly raised. When gripping the pen, I find myself kind of holding it with half of my grip on the metal and half on the barrel, uh, which has that matte finish and that guilloche pattern, which really helps me maintain my grip. Um, if you like to grip your pens a little bit further back, you can easily avoid the uh, small section completely. So while I find this section to be a bit unconventional, I find it to be comfortable to use. The cap does snap to post. Uh, while the snap ensures its security, at 21 grams it is rather hefty. And uh, while I think it looks really sharp when posted, um, I find that it uh, considerably backweights the pen and throws off the balance. So I prefer to use this pen unposted. Um, this is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and a converter is provided. Uh, something interesting uh, is that when it comes to limited edition pens, I'm always keen to see where manufacturers decide to put the number on this pen. And in this case, uh, it's on the inside portion of the section. I believe they call this part the threaded ring. Um, due to the metal parts of this pen, eye dropping would not be recommended. The Graf von Faber-Castell Bentley Barnado is available from a number of retailers and sells for $675. Uh, this is a limited edition of 1930 pieces to honor the year that the race took place. Now, that number isn't just fountain pens. Uh, it includes rollerballs and ballpoints as well. Uh, both Graf von Faber-Castell and Bentley are luxury brands, and this pen has a luxury price. Um, one thing I feel this pen has going for it is that, uh, you know, I don't feel it's the case where they simply slapped an ex uh, exclusive brand name on a pen and jacked up the price of a lesser quality product. This is a solid, well-made, well-crafted writing instrument. Would it have been nice to have a gold nib for this price? Absolutely. But as I mentioned, and as you'll see in the writing sample, the nib on this pen is outstanding. You're not going to feel like you're missing out on anything with this steel nib. And in the end, I feel that this is a pen, this is a pen that not only performs well, but it uniquely incorporates representations of the Bentley brand. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. with some size comparisons for the Graf von Faber-Castell Bentley Barnado. Uh, here it is with another Graf von Faber-Castell, which is their Anello in rose gold. And here it is with a Parker Dual Fold Centennial Big Red. And here it is with a Mont Blanc 149. In regard to a few other pens, here it is with an Omas uh, Ojiva Cocktail Blue Angel. Uh, here it is with a Sailor King of Pen in Royal Tangerine. And then finally, a brand new pen from Montegrappa that will be very interesting to take a look at here in the very near future, which is their Ten Commandments model. Uh, Montegrappa always does an interesting job and has lots of interesting features on some of their high-end pens, and this pen is no different. So, thou shalt not miss that review. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, then here it is with the Mont Blanc 149. 
And here it is with the Sailor King of Pen. And here it is with the Omas Ojiva cocktail. So here we go with the writing sample for the Grav von Faber Castell. And this is the Bentley Barnado. And this is a medium stainless steel nib. And the ink that we're using today is Graf von Faber Castell. Deep Sea Green. This is what the ink looks like. Um, I describe it as a blue green as opposed to a green blue. Uh, and this is what it looks like in comparison to Mont Blanc's Blue Hour, the Twilight Blue. I think it's very similar to that. And then here it is with the Pilot Orochizuku Sukiyo. The ink comes in this bottle. This is Graf von Faber Castell's 75 milliliter bottle. Um, it really looks nice. I like the base on this. Nice wide top. You can fit any pen in here. So uh, it's a nice bottle. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. I mentioned this before, but um, this stainless steel nib is very nice. You can get a decent amount of line variation with a little pressure and then a little bit more. You can get a decent amount out of here. Uh, I'd find that the ink flow is decent for a medium nib as well in regard to reverse writing. It's a little sharp and as you can see it doesn't necessarily do reverse writing that well but in regard to some fast writing It keeps up just fine. And I do, while it's fairly smooth, I do like the feedback that's on this uh, medium nib as well. So here you have the Graf von Faber-Castell Bentley Barnado. I think this was a very interesting addition to their Bentley line, and I'm looking forward to seeing what else they come up with in the near future for their Bentley line. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.